stories are the most powerful thing on earth. They are literally life and death. Wars are waged based on the story of who is the hero and who is the villain. You are the result of a story your parents told each other. The one night stand, the soulmate, and friends who became so much more. Life and death. So wouldn't you like to understand them better, these stories? How Story Works, an elegant guide to the crafts of storytelling by Lonnie Diane Rich, demystifies stories and helps you understand why you love what you love, why you hate what you hate, and why prologues are almost always a bad idea. How Story Works by Lonnie Diane Rich. Available on Amazon in ebook, audiobook, and paperback form. Get your copy today. Welcome to Still Pretty, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast from Chipperish Media. I'm story expert and run-of-the-mill unholy force, Lonnie Diane Rich. And I'm film scholar and person in a lasting relationship with evil, Noelle LaCroix. And we're here today to talk about Choices, the 19th episode of season three. Choices aired on May 4th, 1999 and was written by David Fury with Doug Petrie as story editor and Jane Espenson as executive story editor. And it was directed by James A. Contner. As you all know by now still pretty is a fully spoiled buffy the vampire slayer podcast so we could talk about anything at any time and if you haven't seen it and you're spoiler sensitive maybe you want to watch the entire show before you uh come hang out with us (laughs) i made him an offer he couldn't survive so let's go on patrol In Choices, the mayor gives Faith a wicked cool knife with which to slice open her enemies and asks her to do him a favor by picking something up at the airport. Buffy and Angel are in a rut, nothing but slaying vamps and demons and never going anywhere new. Joyce is excited about Buffy being accepted to Northwestern, but... Faith's turn to the dark side of the floor she pretty much put the proverbial kibosh on any away plans for me. Did you see Sunnydale? At least I got in. After a cruel jab from Cordelia, Buffy goes to Giles and Wesley with a plan for going to college. If she takes down Faith, then all they have to do is keep the -the run-of-the-mill unholy forces at bay until she's back for homecoming. Giles agrees, and Buffy goes off to figure out what the mayor is up to. At the airport, Faith gets the special delivery for the mayor, and Buffy watches her go into City Hall with it. Uh, what happened to the courier? I was supposed to pay him. Huh. Made him an offer to survive. Outside, Buffy grabs one of the mayor's vampire toadies and gets the information about the box. It's the box of Gavrock, which defeats Gav Scissors and which houses a demonic energy the mayor needs to eat in order to ascend. They pull together a plan to nab the box and destroy it, presumably with Gav paper. Wesley objects that the plan is too risky. The mayor will most assuredly have supernatural safeguards protecting the box. Looks like a job for Wiccan Girl. What do you say, Will? Big time danger. Hey, I eat danger for breakfast. But oddly enough, she panics in the face of breakfast foods. Walking through town, Xander sees Cordelia in a dress shop and steps in to get a few shots at Cordy before moving on to get the magical ingredients for the caper. That night, Buffy, Angel, and Willow break into City Hall while Oz and Xander prep for the magical destruction of the box. At City Hall, Willow disarms the magical protections around the box, and Buffy and Angel lower themselves in through a skylight to nab it. The plan goes to hell, vamps come in, a fight ensues, and they get away, without realizing that Willow has been left behind. They've got my box. Yeah, they do. (laughs) But lucky what we got. Back at the library, Buffy wants to trade the box for Willow, but Wesley argues that they need to destroy the box. Oz smashes the receptacle for the ritual, and it's down to Buffy's plan. Willow manages to get out of the room where she's being held, but instead of running out, she breaks into the mayor's office and reads the books of Ascension. It maybe wasn't the smartest plan. Anybody with brains, anybody who knew what was going to happen to her, would be trying to claw her way out of this place. But you, you just can't stop Nancy Drew and Kenya. Faith and Willow start to fight, but the mayor interrupts. They need to go to the school and make the trade. In the cafeteria, both sides meet, but before making the trade, the mayor has some advice for Buffy and Angel. I mean, come come on, what kind of a life can you offer her? I don't see a lot of Sunday picnics in the offing. I see skulking in the shadows. 
hiding from the sun. She's a blossoming young girl. And you want to keep her from the life she should have until it's passed her by. And by God, I think that's a little selfish. Is that what you came back from hell for? Is that your greater purpose? Just as they're making the trade, Principal Snyder comes in and takes the box from Faith, but the mayor steps out from the shadows to intervene. As he's talking to Snyder, one of the guards opens the box and a huge magic beetle hops out and eats his face, then scurries away. As it attacks the mayor, another one comes out of the box. Buffy takes care of one beetle and Faith throws her knife into the other. The mayor leaves, forcing Faith to leave her knife behind in the wall. Snyder, you alive in there? You. All of you. Why couldn't you be dealing drugs like normal people? Back at the school, Willow has some pages from the Books of Ascension that she swiped for Giles. But Buffy's bummed. She knows now that she can't leave Sunnydale. Willow decides to stay, too. She wants to fight evil, and where better than the home of the big brew and evil? We cut to Cordelia at the dress store again and discover that she's not shopping. She's working there. And later, in the graveyard, Buffy and Angel cuddle and decide that everything the mayor said about them was dead wrong. He doesn't even know what a lasting relationship is. No. Probably the only lasting relationship he's ever had is with evil. Yeah. Big, stupid evil guy. We'll be okay. We will. All right, so Noelle, choices, what'd you think? This is another one of those episodes where there's a lot going on and a lot of, like, good little bits and pieces but mm-hmm. overall i'm kind of meh. Yeah. like it's fine there's some stuff that i absolutely love and then there's some stuff that i'm like all right like buffy being lowered down by wire into the mayor's what it's what? mission impossible buffy yeah but <laughs> whatever whatever it doesn't it doesn't super work for me but yeah. there are some things that really do and we will get into all of those i'm sure we absolutely well one of the first things i want to talk about the title of the episode is choices right right and choices talking narratively choices are the absolute most important thing that your character can do is make a choice we see who people are by what they do not necessarily by what they say right so it's all about the choices of the actions that they take and what it is that they do so um we have willow calling out faith on this explicitly when they argue in the mayor's office but the choices that people are making are all throughout this thing. We have all of the choices of colleges, you know, going mm-hmm. to college. For, for Buffy, it's going to college in, in Illinois versus going locally at UC Sunnydale. For uh, Willow, it is every elite school in the history of the universe <laughs> that has accepted her and is very excited. Um, you know, uh, Xander trying to figure out his future, you know. Right. He has a choice between being upset that he can't go to college and just being like, ooh, you know, about that. Or he can decide that he's going to reframe it as this Jack Kerouac adventure, you know. (laughs) And I kind of like that. I kind of dig that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, Buffy and Angel are choosing to deny reality when they're faced with what the mayor tells them about the future of their relationship, that there really is no viable future there. Um, You know, Willow choosing to go into the mayor's office and snoop instead of running to safety. Um, Faith's choice, of course, of the mayor and evil over Buffy and goodness um, and everyone's choice to ignore Wesley the one time he's actually right right yeah <laughs> yeah well and even I mean even the mayor with his little rap about yeah. choosing faith over Buffy yes mm-hmm. which is so sinister yeah like I I absolutely one of the things I love about this episode is faith and the mayor and yeah. their relationship and how yeah. it's evolving I mean everybody knows I love faith and the mayor yes but the way this relationship is taking on an even more sinister note, I yeah. think, than it had previously yeah. is really, really great. And of course, we open with a shot of Faith sitting at the mayor's desk and there's this bird. I don't know if it's a sculpture <laughs> or if it's a taxidermy right. type, you know, situation, like over her head, like it's about to strike her. Yeah. And what I love about that, I mean, it's a great it's a great shot and it very much indicates the kind of situation that Faith is in mm-hmm. um you know that she's chosen to put herself in danger in this environment with the mayor but it's also really reminiscent of Psycho when uh-huh. Marion goes into um Norman Bates's office and he's of course a taxidermist among 
other things. Mm-hmm. And there are birds everywhere. And there's this bird that is poised right. over her oh, as though it's going to, you know, it's going to attack her. And I just, I love that visual kind of unsettling, yeah. you know, mise-en-scene element of this, especially as he's giving her this present, right. but it's a present that comes with requirements right. and the what what's the deal with the with feeding her i mean the cookies yeah. the way he like rewards her in that moment mm-hmm. for being um subservient it's after she calls him sir that yes. he offers her another cookie i'm like right. oh this is getting dark this like is- it always was but it's getting real dark it is getting dark and i love that you picked up on that i hadn't picked up on that uh connection to psycho but we've already had a hitchcock reference in this season with the rope opening um yeah. of the, the first day back at school um and uh, and so i i'm not at all surprised that there would be a kind of a hitchcock reference in there and showing that danger using that that same kind of of bird you know um positioning so that's really Mm -hmm. interesting yeah yeah and then of course you know for faith's part Mm -hmm. she opens the box and she gets this knife and it's this you know thing of beauty and she sniffs it and there's something so like eerie and evil but also kind of faith appropriate to that gesture and i just i love it i love that whole dynamic that yeah. is yeah. happening that, that's faith a classic yeah that's a classic faith kind of thing to do but also like out of all the qualities that the knife will have right the least kind of obvious quality is the smell right but right. the thing is that and smell is often the especially like you know tv can't smell anything right so like we don't we don't <laughs> reference smell that much in in basically a you know visual medium um, right but the thing that's really interesting about that is that when you think about like when you smell something right that is an indication of love like when you smell a baby's head like mm-hmm. the newborn baby smell. Oh my God, that's amazing, right? Um, <laughs> and like when you smell books, you know, like people uh-huh. who love books will smell the old books and just absolutely yep. love that. So like generally when you smell something, it is an indication of intense love for that thing, right? Yeah. Because we don't smell yeah, things connection. we're indifferent to. When I get a well, bill in the mail, I don't sniff it, you know? like Yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's how you... I mean, it's one of the many ways that we figure out whether we have chemistry with someone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure people out there have had the experience of like, you see that cute person and you think, yeah, I might like to have some sexy fun times with that person. <laughs> and then you sniff them or like you get close <laughs> enough that you like get their, you know, you get their musk and you're like, Mm-mm, no, <laughs> no go, no go. <laughs> No way. Or maybe, you know what, maybe I just revealed something very deep about my own experience. But I love the idea that Faith is like, yeah, that she is like bonding with this weapon that is also a gift Mm -hmm. that is representative of her choice to be with the mayor, Mm -hmm. that she's sniffing it to bond with it and to connect with the memory of it. And it's just, it's wonderfully visceral. Yeah. yeah, it is really yeah. good. And getting back to you talking about the mayor feeding faith, right? Yes. Um, because it's almost Pavlovian the way that the second she does what he wants, he gives her a cookie, right? Yeah. Um, but we also have this moment when the mayor talks about having a dog, right? And he's making yeah. an analogy to Buffy, but it almost seems more appropriate for Faith. The mayor says a dog's friendship is stronger than reason, stronger than its own sense of self-preservation, right? Right. And she really is the mayor's dog. She does what she yes. what he says, when he says, gets a treat, and only goes off leash when she knows that he's going to like it. Like when she made that guy an offer, he couldn't survive, right? The mayor mm-hmm. was delighted with that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I find it really interesting for him to be talking about Buffy like she's a dog. But Faith is very much kind of kept like a pet. Yes, Yes, with her her lovely little apartment yes. and all of her, you know, all of the comforts, but then it's all in the service of the mayor and what he wants. Mm-hmm. I I also love that that exchange between Faith and the mayor because she's just said something about you know they wouldn't be stupid enough to come back here, yeah, 
you know, on the same night. And the mayor doesn't even acknowledge her. Yeah. Did you ever have a dog? Like he just (laughs) launches into his own. He's not listening to her. Yeah. He doesn't really care about what she has to say. Mm -hmm. He is waiting for his turn to talk, which Mm -hmm. is one of the ways that you know that someone is – establishing or reinforcing their dominance right Mm -hmm. so he's just he is in his own world and i absolutely read that as being more about faith than about buffy yeah Mm -hmm. um although of course i also flashed on when harry met sally is one of us supposed to be (laughs) a a dog dog in in this scenario scenario? (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's pretty great but faith didn't pick up on it (laughs) sally picked up on it sally got that um, but mm-hmm. Faith did not. So, uh, so yeah, that doesn't uh, doesn't bode well for Faith. Um, but I think this episode, though, more than anything, is Willow's episode. Oh God, yes. I mean, it's incredible. First of all, I think, and remind me because I think you notice about costumes like more than I do. But mm-hmm. this is the first like grown up outfit that Willow has worn. And it's a very kind of witchy outfit, that long oh, yeah. dress. And it's sort of a velour velvety kind of thing, you know, and, it's and got it that... has like astrological yes. symbols and it's got a sun on it. Yeah. It's this beautiful, like, yeah, I, I, this is not meant to be a disparaging remark, but it looks like a tapestry that, you know, yeah. a newly minted pagan girl would have sure. above her bed. Right. <laughs> but it it's does. this, it's this long, like, form-fitting dress Mm -hmm. and it is so so perfect for badass witchy willow well yeah and it's so interesting because it is such a divergence from the way that willow's costuming has been and when she comes back in the end scene she's back in overalls you know yes so she is really straddling this transitional space between who she was and who she's becoming and i think Mm -hmm. that that's really neat but i love her wearing that outfit while um exhibiting such incredible power you know, yeah. this episode is really about her power. She, I eat danger for breakfast, you know? I mean, like, <laughs> this kind of stuff that Willow... Willow has not had that level of confidence. And so we're going to see that this is the new Willow. This is where we're going mm-hmm. to. You know, this is the Willow that we're transitioning into. Um, but I think this is the first time we've seen that Willow. And it is kind of a stark transition. Like, it seems like it's, yeah. it's like a light switch got flipped. We've seen her kind of working, you know, with the magic and becoming more powerful. And I mean, let's not forget, she returned Angel soul to him at the end of the last season. Like, she's nobody right. to mess with, you know. She's been breaking into Giles's books, reading all of the... I mean, she has been... <laughs> I love that so much. Right. I mean, we've seen her in this transition throughout, but this is the stark moment where we... Where it's it's visual and it's mm-hmm. also, like, completely textual. Like, she is not even fucking around now. Um, you know, we get her uh, floating the pencil to dust the vamp, right? So she calls this vampire in. She's mm-hmm. floating the pencil. She gets him to want to bite her. And then she dusts him with a pencil. And I'm like, okay, I love that callback to earlier in the season when she was floating the pencil. Right. Yep. Um. And uh, and I absolutely love that whole reference and it kind of coming full circle with that. Um. I love her choosing like she's she's able to escape, but she goes into the mayor's office. She finds the books of ascension and she sits there for what looks like hours. By the time Faith mm-hmm. comes to see her, she has got four books all of them open right at her yep. feet. She has been going through this whole thing um, and then stealing the pages God damn. and giving yeah. them to Giles. I mean, my God, this is a whole new Willow. This is so badass and I absolutely love it and I'm here for it. Yeah. Badass witch of my heart. Yes. I love her and I love her embracing I love her embracing witchcraft. Like I feel yeah. <laughs> I feel very connected to this like I have this power. I am growing this power. Yeah. And of course it's so beautifully represented mm-hmm. with the pencil floating which sure. at first the first time we see it is just kind of this novelty. Yeah. And we hear in that, I think it's in Doppelgangland, Mm -hmm. at the beginning of Doppelgangland, that being able to do that, have that control over the pencil is about controlling her emotions. Yes. Because when she gets upset, she rams it into a tree. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the implied badassery of being able to control her emotions and her power and harness her magic while this vampire is looming over her. He's going to bite her. 
He's not he's not fucking around. No. Uh, but she dusts him with a pencil, which has got to take, you know, some serious force. Yes. I don't know anything about, you know, stabbing a, a human <laughs> body with a pencil, because why would I know that? That would be monstrous. But I imagine, yeah. mm-hmm. I imagine that it takes some pretty serious yeah, Force. and some precision. You got to get right between mm-hmm. the ribs because that pencil is not going to go through ribs. I mean, that's a very complicated thing, but she does it and it's so super awesome. She's yeah. amazing, you know. She's embracing yeah. her power and mm-hmm. she's embracing this this desire to fight evil and help people. Yeah. And she does it by studying and learning shit and yeah. reading books. And I love it so much and choosing to stay in Sunnydale you know yes. she's got all of these options she's got Oxford where they make little Giles's I love I that know. I thought that was so I cute. know um she's got Oxford you know Yale Harvard MIT <laughs> you know like every elite school in the world is like Willa Rosenberg come on down right and she mm-hmm. wants to go to UC Sunnydale you know um mm-hmm. because she wants to fight evil that you know the point of going to college is to figure out what you want to do I know what I want to do and it's here and I love that she makes that choice not for Buffy you know but for herself it's all just fantastic it's so good it's so good so much self-knowledge so empowering yeah Fuck yes. I just, I love it. I love it. (laughs) All right. Speaking of other awesome in this episode, fucking Oz, man. Oh my God. Oz is the (laughs) best of everything. I love how cool he is when, um, you know, like when he's just there, he's supporting Willow while there's like Cordelia comes out swinging at her, you know. Mm -hmm. The whole time he's sitting in that scene, he doesn't really say anything, but you can see his arm just gently moving as he strokes Willow's back during that entire scene. Like he is there for her. Then there's when the, uh, he and Xander are looking at the instructions that Willow left for them. And he just says, nobody like my will, you know, Mm -hmm. I love that so much. And it's this quiet thing that he does. He's pretty much quiet throughout this entire episode until the moment where he takes charge of everything, smashes the pot for the ritual. You know, it's just mm-hmm. like, no, we're not even having this discussion. We're saving Willow and that's it, right? Yeah. Um, here's Oz, right? Who out of all the Scoobies is kind of the addendum, right? You know, he's not, he mm-hmm. doesn't have any special magical gifts or powers. He's not like Xander, who's like been part of the crew from the beginning. He is there because of Willow. As right. where Willow goes, so goes my nation. That is a classic Oz <laughs> line. Um, so he is there because of Willow. And he's he's basically a support person. And he completely understands. He's like, he's ready to do whatever support he can. Um, he does not take charge. He does not make decisions. He's a soldier and he goes where he's told, right? Um, but mm-hmm. in this particular case, it involves Willow. And he is not fucking around. He is not going to sit there while Wesley, you know, basically risks Willow's life. He smashes everything that they put together for this. And we'd already established earlier that this particular ritual is kind of fussy, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So having smashed everything, there's no way to, like, get that back. Um, And I love I love what a strong, powerful statement that is. And this is the thing about Oz. Oz is quiet. He doesn't say much and he doesn't take much like definitive action. But when he does, like he means it. I love mm-hmm. that about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oz, man of action. Ah, absolutely. Um, and I've been thinking, I've actually been thinking a lot about our our assessment of Oz as kind of the perfect yes. man, mm-hmm. sort of the perfect um, expression of young masculinity yes. on this show, at least up till this point. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I don't know how to reconcile with Oz is when Xander is inappropriate, yeah. Oz never says anything. No. And I'm kind of on the fence about how I feel about that because I do feel like, you know, it's it's not mm, it's not the best to just kind of let that sit, but also right. Oz is so like he is so man of action like yeah. he's not gonna say words to xander and i don't know if it's because he's just decided that words don't work yeah. <laughs> like in general I think, I think it's about i think that if if xander when xander comes to him about stuff 
Oz speaks, right? Because Xander's coming to him. When they were having that conversation where he, where Xander was watching Cordelia, I think it was the last episode of the episode before. Yeah, last episode. Right. And um, and Xander's, you know, saying all this stuff and Oz is making this quiet commentary, right? He's not calling Xander out exactly, but he's also not letting it sit. He's not letting it slide, you know? Um, and so I think that Oz looks at the opportunities to make a difference and I think that and honestly there's something to this that like you can challenge people you know on things the chances of them actually listening to you are the chances of anybody being like oh wow I'm really glad you pointed that out I just didn't (laughs) you know and also I think his assessment of Xander's ability to understand anything he might say um Mm -hmm. is probably pretty slim but being able to be a constant like flowing water that smooths the rock, right? You know, mm-hmm. little bit by little bit. That I think that he he does things that honestly are quieter, but probably more efficacious in the long run. You know, yeah. um, so I think there's a power in that. Yeah, I guess my point is I don't want to. You know, I come down so hard on Xander yeah. because Xander is often Mm -hmm. disgusting. Although I have to say, I like him in this episode. I like like him a lot. Um, But I come down, you know, I come down really hard on Xander Mm -hmm. because I care. No, (laughs) Um, but, but I don't, you know, but I kind of let Oz slide. And I guess, I guess what I'm doing is just kind of calling myself in on this whole, like, Ah. well, wait a minute, like what behavior is acceptable and what is not. Mm -hmm. Um, And definitely, you know, something to continue to watch. But I do, I actually really do like Xander in this episode. I love Xander and Oz together. Yeah. I love them working on the spell, you know, know. twice blessed sage, or maybe that's the toad. (laughs) And then Oz says, toad me which is just so great so great no but it's they're so you know fantastic they're and working also, on it together i love i love the way that oz is with xander especially because given that history you know Willow yeah. cheated on him with xander and oz when he makes the decision that he's gonna let shit go he lets shit go yeah. like yeah it's impressive and he's never he's never unkind to xander he holds no like he is confident in who he is he is confident that willow has chosen him you Mm -hmm. know and i think if willow chose xander he'd still be like all right that's your choice to make you know and he would yeah like he would i don't want to say allow that because you don't allow that but like he would not hold you know any any hard feelings or whatever i think that he'd be he'd be good um because he took his time to process everything at the time and work through his feelings it's just oz is the perfect man he is the perfect man I love how we both have such a thing for Oz, by the such way, that we're both just Oz. like Oz. It's Oz. Uh, it's I Oz. mean, yeah. it's Oz. Oz is not a uh, not age appropriate, though. So uh, maybe we should talk about the other man that we both oh will my God. always, always, always. Giles. Yes. <laughs> Giles. We talk about Giles. Librarian of my heart. A librarian Rupert of Giles. my heart. Oh, He's my God. He's so great. I love I love now, now that we have Wesley in here, right? You know, Wesley can be the stuff sure. And Giles is more willing to be reckless. He's happy to work something out so that Buffy can go to college. He's happy to trade the box for Willow. His priority is what's best for his people, not necessarily what's like the smartest move for a watcher fighting against evil, but also he's not a watcher anymore. He doesn't have to carry that stupid weight. He can be part of this fight without having that, that sense of a divided loyalty, you know? Um, I think that probably one of my favorite moments uh, in this episode, possibly, you know, maybe all of Buffy, is uh, when Willow pulls out those papers that she swiped from the book (laughs) and Giles' face is like a kid at Christmas. And the thing is that, like, yes... He needs this in order to be able to, you know, solve the problem. And it is about working the problem and stopping the mayor. But it is also about having those pages to read and understand. Yes. And like, yeah. he loves the research. He loves the work. And God, that that face of glee. Oh, God. When she pulls that out, it really was like a kid at Christmas. And it really is like a reversal kind of in the relationship between Willow and Giles. Like yeah. in that moment, Willow is running this show. She's in charge. And Giles is just one of the Scoobies. Yep. It's so yep. cool. And he's so it's it's the glee at having the research, it's the glee at having the the information that he needs. Yeah. But also his pride in her, like yes. his love that that just that like pure bliss of yes. oh my god. 
god, she could, you know, because of course, like yeah. of course she did. I know, of and she, she was playing them the, the whole pages. time. I she know. knew she had those pages. She was like, well, you know, I read as much as I could. And I did, but look what I got. Like she was completely setting that up and it was awesome. Yeah, and you know, we've had Willow taking some teeny tiny little jabs at Giles and how he doesn't want her to yeah. you know dig so deep into the occult yeah. he doesn't think she's ready for these books so he hides right. them in places in the office yes. and, you know and she's that's a great moment for their relationship of willow showing him no mm-hmm. i'm ready yes i got this yes. not only did i read these books but i brought you back some souvenirs oh you know, my she's, god it's so good it's, it's so so it's good so wonderful and another there's another moment of giles delight um that kind of gets not quite lost in the shuffle of everything that's going on. But when Buffy tells yeah. him that she got into Northwestern and his quiet, oh, like, pride. pride yes. Yeah. And just, it's so, it's so sweet and dear. And we just see his love for her. Yeah. In this. Because he's this focused moment. on her. Yeah. It's about her. Like, she, you know, has this responsibility to fight evil. They're on a hell mouth. Bad shit's happening all the time. Uh, her going to Illinois means that she will be away from him. And, of course, that would make right. him sad. But in the moment that she tells him, the only thing he's thinking about is how great that is for her. And that is, again, like, just this demonstration of love. And, and demonstrations of love like that are such delightful things i mean they just they grab my heart every time i see somebody genuinely loving someone in a way that is so selfless you know and just about what's best for them and what they want i love that yeah and it's not always easy to capture on on film yeah you know like that is that because that is very much about the relationship and the feeling and mm-hmm. what you have built up to that point and then the performance of the actor and like there are a yeah. lot of there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to creating a really genuine yeah bond and that's something that i think buffy as a whole does really well yes um, absolutely we'll see that we'll see that later on with other relationships that you know grow and change and um it's it's really it's really lovely the way those yeah. things are set up and then they're, they can pay off in this sweet, understated, but really authentic seeming way. I know. It's so fantastic. Um, I also actually kind of liked Wesley in this episode because he, <laughs> he had some competence. I mean, he was like, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? So, right. I mean, the fact that he was like, he was right about the recklessness of the plan. Uh, he was wrong about not going in to save Willow. And it's always funny to me. Because of the extra textual knowledge I have that the actor who plays Wesley is married to the actress who plays Willow. Right. <laughs> they have two right. kids now. They're just feeling great. Life is good, you know. Um, yep. But it's really funny because he's the one, you know, I mean, the, the actor is the one who actually has the relationship with Allison Hannigan. And Oz is the one who's like, no, you're going to save her. So I don't know. There's something about that that I always find fun in that moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just that but extra what do you textual think knowledge. Of, what do you think of Wesley's point that, like, we're going to sacrifice thousands of lives and your you know all of your friends and family to save well i mean that's always such an interesting philosophical question well right you know it's the it's essentially the trolley question right you know um and uh and so i think that in this circumstance because willow is such a pivotal i mean there's the slayer but there's willow I mean, Mm -hmm. Willow has a tremendous amount of power and she not just as Willow, but like as part of this, you know, this troop of warriors, right, is one of the most powerful people they've got. Like, even if they had the box without Willow, would they be able to do anything with it? Would they be like, what would they do? So I think that like even remaining in that cold analytical place, Wesley's wrong. I think I think in that. But I mean, but on top of it, it's like you know, these are our people. We don't right. leave a man behind. Like, that's not right. how we run this. You know, that's not how this is done. So, um, so Wesley, I think is, I, I would say absolutely wrong about that. What did you think? I, well, I'm always on the fence about those questions because I, kn- I am. They're tough questions to answer. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm certainly like with the, with the protagonists about, you know, we are, like, right. we're not, we're not leaving Willow to die. Yeah. I mean, Especially not Willow. Right. It's like, like Willow's my girl. And 
It's, it is a hard thing to think about, you know, what, yeah. what sort of risk is worth it? Like what, yeah, you know, how do you, how do you make that decision? How do you, how do you decide who yeah. lives and who dies? And it's not, you know, that's a very it's, difficult decision yeah. to make. And I think that sometimes it's, it's, it's real, especially when you talk about the numbers, right? You know, like you yeah. got one life versus all these other lives, you know, mm -hmm. and how do you make that choice, which is the essence of the, for anybody who's uh, interested in, you know, look up the trolley problem and it's a philosophical question. And um, it's basically where, you know, you're driving a trolley and you can let it go and do nothing and it, you know, hits five people or you can turn the wheel and kill one person on another track right mm -hmm. but like the difference between letting things go the way they do and and not doing anything versus taking action that actually decides who dies you right know? and then yeah. how does that change when that one person is someone you love yes exactly which is really it's a really difficult question to answer mm -hmm. um but i think that i think that even without that that willow's value in the fight is just so great that yeah you know you can't you can't let her go anyway so I think that this is, I think it's an argument in this case that doesn't, um, that Wesley's still wrong, but like, yeah, yeah well, but that question is a, is a good question to ask. And we know, we know that the Watchers Council basically thinks of people and especially young women as yeah. disposable. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, course. the Slayer's like, disposable. Yeah. The Slayer. Oh, know? they'll call another one. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. We'll just pick up a new girl. Um, yeah. So I don't know. The, the Watchers are just problematic in so many ways. But speaking of, I just received this week's Patreon ask at the last minute. Uh, honestly, we may have to hire a new production agency because it's just getting a little bit ridiculous. But as we didn't have time to record a new one ourselves, I guess. Here we go. I'm not dead. And it appears that politics do indeed make strange bedfellows, as I find myself now entirely dependent upon these little messages left with chipperish media in order to tell you all that I am not dead. So let me get this out of the way. Chipperish Media makes all the podcasts you love about the stories you love, talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel the Series, Good Omens, Explosive Inspiration, How Stories Work, all that stuff. And you love them because they are so very, very good at what they do. Well, I, I assume they're good. I don't actually listen. But you do. And if you don't go to patreon.com slash chipperish right now and give them some money, really anything over a dollar a month will do, then they are going to shut down, and right now, I'll be honest with you, they appear to be my best hope. So get out that credit card and support the podcasts you love. My life may, quite literally, count on it. And Bryony, if you're out there listening, and I know you are, I will most certainly be seeing you. Soon. How do you turn this bloody thing off? Well, that that was weird. Is that what you wrote for them? No, they've been going off book for a while now. I mean, I emailed the agency. Um, they're mm -hmm. not answering my emails, but we're still getting files every week. So I don't know. I guess whatever. Weird. That's really weird. It is, you know, but I got other shit to deal with. So, you know, it's, it's <laughs> True. fine. Okay. It's fine. You know, you ready for me to bring us back in? Yes. Yeah, sure. All right, let's do this thing. Thanks, Clive, I guess, for that. So, Noelle, um, yes. Xander and Cordelia, uh, I think both, we've got some interesting stuff. We're sort of laying the the stage for this next kind of like narrative movement with, uh, with Cordelia. Um, yeah. What do you think about these two in this episode? Well, you know, I said already that I kind of, I, I kind of like Xander in this episode. I love him trying to reframe his <laughs> future. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but he is, he's so mean to Cordelia. And of course she's mean right back. She's but I'm like, so mean to everybody I'm like, come though. come on. Yeah. yeah. But Cordelia, I mean, Cordelia is really hurting. Yeah. And we, we don't, don't know that in the beginning. quite though. get that yet. Yeah. But. Yeah, Xander, Xander deciding to take his future by the Kerouac is <laughs> kind of wonderful. I love that. I love that, like, here he is, 
you know, looking at not being able to go to college, not having that option open to him. All of his friends are going to college. He's going to be left behind. And instead, he's deciding to, like, look at it in a way that's exciting and interesting and that has appeal to him. I love that. I love the way he's reframing the way that he can look at his future. Um, I think it's really, really cool. Cordelia, when she came in, um, and she is just, like, not only cutting to Xander, but to Willow and to Buffy. And Buffy. I yeah. mean, it's cruel what she says to them. And it's, you know, I mean, Cordelia's always had a bite, you know, ever since the uh, the cheating with Xander mm-hmm. and Willow. Um, but she hasn't been like this. And so as we're watching it, you're like, well, what the hell is up with Cordelia? But then, of course, later at the end of the episode, we see that she is working um, at the dress shop and not shopping at the dress mm-hmm. shop and that you know you know that something's really really wrong something's going on with cordelia and um it's it's very kind of subtly laid in here and it's something that's really mm-hmm. going to pay off uh, next week in the prom um but uh but it's it's kind of it's it's i don't want to say nice but it's a nice story movement to give her that vulnerability oh for sure i mean mm-hmm. i love i i love it when someone is uncharacteristically cruel or you know even Mm -hmm. characteristically cruel and then we find out Uh what's going on Mm -hmm. and then you know (laughs) talk about a philosophical problem like you find out that someone is being awful because they're going through something really difficult and it's like uh well that doesn't make it okay but also i feel you you know but also (laughs) i get it yeah i get it i get it and i love the way i love the way it's foreshadowed with you know xander saying i guess they couldn't say no to your father's money right oh and we get this like ooh, like you're you're wrong but for the right reasons or right for the right like exactly. that kind of thing always always gets me in the gut um yeah. but I like that Cordelia is still like she doesn't she's not really letting it cut her completely down I mean she's yeah. taking it out on her peers but she's also you know Xander tries to shame her and suggest yeah. that maybe she didn't get into college at all and she says no you're yeah. wrong and she's right. got her receipts and <laughs> she's just... got she's got all those letters that she's carrying around with her to colleges that she can't go to like that itself the fact that she has those in at the ready right there mm-hmm. you know it's not like a plot convenience like the fact that she's carrying those around i think is a character beat because she's carrying around this future that she can't have You know, Mm -hmm. and that's Mm -hmm. really heartbreaking, especially because, you know, we've established Cordelia is smart. She gets good grades, you know. Um, So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really kind of heartbreaking, but it's a nice move, uh, you know, to bring more vulnerability into her. And of course, obviously, we're setting up, you know, everything. We're setting up uh, Angel, the series um, at this, at which point Cordelia is going to be going to Los Angeles, try to become an actress uh, because she can't go to college. And that's how she Mm -hmm. and Angel are going to end up uh, starting Angel Investigations together. Um, So so that's it's nice because we're setting all that up, but we're doing it with this lovely, crunchy vulnerability for her. And it's really great yeah yep i love that Uh, love it so speaking of angel uh we've got this buffy and angel stuff going on in this episode first we have the opening in the in the graveyard where they're um they're in a rut you know yes and i love that moment where he's like you know well i thought that you know nest of fire Fire demons demons in the cave at the the beach was a nice change of pace you know um it's so incredibly sweet and then you know, um, we have them working really well together. They're beating up all the mayor's people. They get the box together. They've got this whole, you know, heist that they pull off. Um, but then when they're doing the trade with the mayor and the mayor stops everything to fuck with them. Oh, yeah. You know, to tell them. And the thing is, is that just because he's evil doesn't mean it's not true, you know, that he's not right. Um, how, what kind of future are they going to have? He can't give her, you know, children. He can't give her a life. He can't go out in sunlight. He is going to stay the same while she ages. Um, all of that is, you know, tough. Yeah. And I mean, I made a snarky remark about the mayor being a family man when, when, uh, I think it's in doppelgangland where he, you know, faith calls him, calls him her sugar daddy. And he's like, nope. Um, but 
he kind of really was. Like he talks about his wife, his yeah. Edna May. Yeah. He was married. He had a wife. And I mean, did that like was he evil before that? Probably. But Well, see, he wasn't aging. Yeah. So I mean, he married her while he wasn't aging, and he said she got old and angry and senile yeah. and you know, resented that I still had my youth. You know, yeah. um, but he's also like if he hasn't aged in 100 years, he's in his like mid 40s. So yeah. it is possible that he they got married. And then at some point, you know, during that marriage, he was able to uh, to stop aging and all of that. And then she continued on. And so he had to live in that experience. But he stayed like, here's this evil guy. Right. You know, mm-hmm. who's clearly doing evil, you know, um, but stays with one woman until she dies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really interesting little bit of character detail for the mm-hmm. mayor. Yeah. And I mean, and I love the idea of him. Oh, gosh, it's so layered because yes. we've heard him say to Faith already you know she's he says i can't believe it didn't work out between you Mm -hmm. and angel and you know that's sorry excuse for a creature of the night and he's kind of trying to like he's he's trying to sort of dadly advice that over with her you know Mm -hmm. make her feel feel better about presumably not being able to seduce angel yeah because Mm -hmm. women are only valuable for whatever whatever we're not going to go there (laughs) but he's you know he's comforting her in this kind of fatherly way of like you know you didn't it's his loss you didn't want him anyway kind of Mm -hmm. line of thinking but then he goes ahead and takes it out on angel and buffy in this really like it, it's a really, really interestingly layered way because we do get the sense, or at least I do, that mm-hmm. he is telling the truth about how difficult it was to have a right. relationship with someone who was mortal when he was not and mm-hmm. aging when he was not and everything that that implies. And of mm-hmm. course, some of that is a little bit of a production for faith. Right. Some of it is you know, why not fuck with Angel and Buffy while they're there? Well, yeah, um, separating Angel and Buffy, you know, yeah. I mean, because the thing is, is that they work well together, they draw strength from each other and and putting a wedge in there is a good strategic move. But yeah, I think it's more complex than that. I think yeah. that's part of what he's doing. But I think he's also doing it because Angel chose Buffy over Faith, you know? Yeah. Um, and that sticks in his craw a little bit. Um, and he's getting back at them <laughs> for, for Faith, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, but also like, it's a wonderful thing when, you know, an evil person tells the truth, having evil tell the truth and be honest, um, is really fun. We do that a lot with Spike, you know, like he's, he's evil, but (laughs) when he tells you, he's probably right, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's very fun to have this evil character have a quality you know, um, have that, have that quality of that we associate with goodness is honesty. Although honestly, good people tend to be dishonest about anything they think is going to upset or hurt anybody else. So So, honesty being the realm of the good, I think is not necessarily terribly accurate. I think honesty is neutral, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. because, Because whether honesty is helpful or hurtful depends on a lot of things. It depends on tone. It depends on context. Yes. It depends on, oh gosh. I mean, yeah, I can think of, I can think of situations where someone might be being honest, but Mm -hmm. it's not helpful or it's not appropriate or it's not the right audience. Right. So, but I don't know, honesty on its own. Um, it's a great, I mean, it's a great story element. If you have someone, you have someone tell the truth and then you get to, you get to learn about them and what they Mm -hmm. do with the truth. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, like you mentioned at the open of the show, we know who characters are based on the choices that they make. Yep. The mayor chooses to interrupt this whole hand, you know, handoff with, Story time about right. himself and Edna May and his 
you know, oh, poor Buffy. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's talking directly to Angel about what you are going to do to her, mm-hmm. how damaging this is going to be to her if you stay with her. Yep. Like, shame on you, essentially, mm-hmm. for keeping, you know, wanting to keep this this person who has all of this potential and growth left, you know, in the dark and skulking yep. in the shadows. And he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, yeah. But And what a great time to unleash some truth, some fatherly yeah. advice, if you will. And mm-hmm. he's doing the bad. I mean, from the, the opening scene, he's been doing the bad dad thing. Yeah. He's, he has moved away from good dad with, you know, a bad agenda <laughs> to... Yeah. He's just a bad dad now. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's really good. It's real I love the mayor. I think I say I it every him. single episode, but he's I love fantastic. him. He's fantastic. Nothing not to love. Uh he's, he's a great such a great character. character. Yeah, he's absolutely fabulous. Um and uh and I, I like that complication. You know, like because mm-hmm. honesty is, you know, we associate it mostly with virtue. We think of honesty as a virtue, but it is a very complicated tool that can be used for in a number of different ways. Um, and, and I love the way that we have the mayor use that honesty to uh, to take his enemies down. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of nice. I like it. Uh, so, Noelle, what are you wearing? Well, we talked about willow's dress yes and Mm -hmm. how fantastic it is to see her adopt this kind of witch uniform this like badass and it's kind of sexy which i like and of course that is going to be an element of willow that we're going to see more of Mm -hmm. um is it next week I think it is. Oh no, I think it's a it's the gra- or no, it, it's graduation, graduation day. Graduation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um where she and Oz yes. consummate their relationship. Yes. Uh but I love that it's it's you know, she's coming more into herself and mm-hmm. you know, of course by the end she knows what she wants to do. She had this terrifying experience, yeah. but she she is pleased with the way she handled it and we yeah. see this you know, we see her kind of strutting a little yeah. bit which I love and did you notice also that her coat looks an awful lot like Oz's coat yes I don't yes. know if it is his coat if she has borrowed it his does coat look like it yeah but it looks like Oz's coat I like the idea that maybe mm-hmm. Oz is rubbing off on her yeah um you know it's nice to see that symbolically in in the wardrobe mm-hmm. and then I gotta talk about Faith's you know, airport <laughs> mission. Like what Faith <laughs> wears to the airport <laughs> with her crossbow? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Okay, so she's wearing her leather pants, which of course she is. And she's which, got her leather jacket. Mm-hmm. But then she's got this like white crop top corset thing? bustier yeah. corset. She looks like a freaking pirate. It's I amazing. Know. She and it's looks awesome. And she's like the pirate queen yeah. shooting this dude with a crossbow, which, of course, we have, have discovered. It's probably not a crossbow, is it? I'm probably saying that wrong. And someone it's is some kind of I don't think it's a crossbow. It's but not it's a like crossbow. Some kind it's, of, a... it's some kind of like, you know, um, like, you know, a bow and arrow on on steroids or something. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 sort it's of, yeah. vamped up. I'm sure that there is a word for that, maybe. And the fact that know. we don't know it probably speaks very well of us. I think maybe. I think maybe. <laughs> I mean, but I love, you know, and I love the, you know, she's the the dark maiden warrior also yeah. mm-hmm. um, with her, her bow and arrow, you know, in the night hunting, you know, these do like he's not a vampire, is he? The yeah. courier's not. He's no, just, no, he's not. He's just a he's he's got tattoos on his neck. I don't know if that means he's, he's a, a dude with a face sort. tattoo, which he's a tells you everything, <laughs> presumably tells you everything you need to know about him. Um, but I love I love her like swashbuckling sort of. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> awesome. Sort of She's it's really awesome. leaning hard into this maiden warrior yeah. for this, you know, for the dark side kind yeah. of thing. And then when she gets back to the to uh city hall and the mayor is just showering her with affection she's like yeah keep you know yeah lay it on like, yeah. lay it on a little thicker yeah. um it's wonderful it's wonderful i love i mean i love seeing faith you know as as uh, characterized by her wardrobe yeah she's 
I think Faith and Willow probably mm-hmm. get the most characterization through through their outfits, yeah. through what they're wearing, yeah. um, and how they look is really really important. And I mm-hmm. just I dig it's it so much, so very very cool. Um, all right, so I you know we have girl power moment of the week. Oh my I don't God. know that we need to necessarily, I mean, we've talked about that. Like, it's Willow. <laughs> yeah, it's everything Willow. Everything Willow. Dusting the vamp with the pencil, staying to read the books of Ascension, which she should be running the fuck out of there. <laughs> taking a punch from a slayer. Taking a punch from a slayer and getting yeah. back up. We haven't talked about that. Faith must have been seriously holding back, but still. Like, yeah. she gets hit in the face by a slayer, falls to the ground, gets back up and is like, yeah, bitch, come at me again. Right? <laughs> I mean... My God, stealing the pages from the Book of Ascension. Like, yeah. this is badass Willow in her most badassiest. It's fantastic. Yep, yep. And then, you know, uh, concluding with telling Buffy, you know, yeah. she's staying in Sunnydale. And it's not about you. It's about me and what I am and what called I to do. do. Yeah. And I'm just like, hell yeah. That's hell right, yeah. Girl. And also, you know, it's real convenient. You get to stay with your you know, with your of best course. friend, but of course, yes. it's not really about you. It's about but me. It's and not. You know, it's, it's about, about but I love too when awesome. Buffy yeah. launches herself at Willow and they go rolling around on the ground. I lo- like, and Aw. I love that. That I love the gif of that. Yes, as well. I know that's one of my shows favorite up in things. my timeline all you know, the time. Frequently, it's yes. wonderful. <laughs> all right, so Noel, what's your favorite part? Okay, this is one of those favorite parts that's not particularly like joy inducing, but just Mm -hmm. as a character moment, as a visual moment, faith looking longingly at the knife in the wall. Yes, stuck in the wall. Mm -hmm. Stuck in the wall and like truly in this moment of choice. And it's not, I don't read that moment as she's thinking about, you know, do I choose to go over there and get the knife or do I leave with the mayor right now? I read it as, oh, shit, I've already made my choice. Yeah. Here are all of these people on this one side that, mm-hmm. you know, because she she knows yeah. that Willow is right. When Willow yeah. says, you had friends like Buffy and you threw it all away. Yeah. Faith knows she's looking at evidence of mm-hmm. having made her choice in that moment. And then, of course, you know, there is the, the real sense of loss of yeah. this thing that was a gift is – precious to her in that it represents the kind of power that she wishes she mm-hmm. could keep. She yeah. wishes she could hang on to. Um, you know, it's definitely, I mean, that knife, mm-hmm. the design of that yeah. knife is brilliant. I mean, that is a tool. That is a tool of evil. That, that is, is a tool of evil. That is meant not just to do a job, but to do it with as much pain as possible. Yes, it's clearly meant to torture. Yes. Um, in addition to yes. killing. And Faith is not really that person. She's yeah. not really evil, but she wants to. I, I get the sense from Faith that it would almost be preferable for her if she didn't have any conscience you know any yeah, um, yeah, conscience exactly. that if yeah. she didn't have a soul if mm-hmm. she could be angelus and just kill right. gleefully but i don't get the sense that that's who she is especially well, in that moment well it's really interesting though that she does throw the knife right because that beetle thing mm-hmm. is on the side of the room with all the people that she doesn't care about like there's a couple of, but the only people she cares about are her and the mayor in that right. room, right? Right. Um, and that beetle is all the way across the room, but she throws her knife and gives up her knife to save everyone in that room. That there's that's still part of who she is, mm-hmm. right? She could have just walked out with the mayor, mm-hmm. you know, like and not thrown that because the beetle, like, first of all, the mayor's not going to get hurt by the beetle. The beetle has five, ten people that sh- they can chew through before it gets to faith, right? She True. doesn't care about any of those people. She still saves them. Mm hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. sacrifices the thing that the gift that the mayor gave her to do it. I think that is a really interesting choice. Yeah. Yeah. To let go of it mm-hmm. in the service of everyone in the room, but also because her calling yeah. that she has, she's told us before, her calling mm-hmm. is killing demons. Yeah. That's what she's built for. Yeah. She loves it. She loves killing evil things. Mm-hmm. But now she's on the side of evil. And yeah. it's not really where she wants to be. She it's not wants, natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she wants, she wants to be loved and she wants that connection and she wants the, the kind of security that yeah. the mayor is at least 
pretending to offer her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, really good. It I is. really so, love so that good. moment. I really love seeing her struggle and I mm-hmm. love how much heartache they managed to get into just that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's it's absolutely wonderful and it gets me it, it gets me in the feels. I know. It's so great. So what's your favorite part, Lonnie? Uh, I got to say, it's a bit of a tough call. Um, I am torn between <laughs> Willow dusting the vampire with the floating pencil because you know me, I love a good callback, right? Yes. I oh, love, yeah. It's Chekhov's floating pencil, man. You know, we finally, <laughs> we finally played it, right? Yeah. Um, and then Oz smashing the ritual pot. I think, I got it's such a hard call for me, but I think yeah. it may be Oz. It yeah. may be Oz because he, it, because it is such, it's such a clear choice that he makes um, and a powerful choice. And Oz is quiet and he hangs back and he doesn't but like when he means something he fucking means it and i love that i love that so much i always love that moment yep and it's a clear you know i love it as you know action literally speaking louder than words but oz you know why the hell are we even having a discussion yeah Fuck yeah, all of oh, you. We're not going to have this discussion. <laughs> like, like, we are not going to have, you're not going to have this discussion. I'm going to take away the only thing that makes yeah. you even have this discussion. So y'all better get to skipping and make exactly. this happen, you know? Mm-hmm. And I love that from Oz because it's so, it's so out of character for him, but under the circumstances, completely in character for him. That's it for today. To join in the discussion on Twitter, follow Lonnie at Lonnie Diane Rich and me at Noelle Allowed and use the hashtag still pretty. Or you can keep Chipperish Media going to the tune of a dollar a month or more and gain access to the live chat and Discord where you can hang out with me and Noelle and all the Chipperish patrons who didn't get permission to eat the hostage. You can also show your support by giving Still Pretty a great review on Apple Podcasts or by telling your friends about the show or by giving Buffy and Angel a bit of fatherly advice. We will be back next time with The Prom, the 20th episode of season three. Until then, I gotta have a plan. Can I just be proactive with Pep? Pep.